Hello everyone. Welcome back with another lecture on veterinary parasitology. In this lecture, I'm going to discuss hemolysis in sheep, goats and cattle. First, I will highlight the causal agents or important species that cause hemolysis followed by their morphological features. Then I will discuss the life cycle, pathogenesis and clinical manifestation of the disease in animals. Finally, I will highlight the diagnosis, post-mortem findings and treatment of ovine or bovine or caprine hemonchosis. Follow my channel's playlist to get more video lecture on veterinary parasitology. Stay connected with the channel Batmed Lectures to get more video lecture on different subjects of veterinary medicine. So without further ado, let's get started. Causal agent of ovine or bovine or caprine hemonchosis. Under the Trichostome gyloidea superfamily, Hemonchus is one of the important genera. The most important species under the genera is Hemonchus contortus. The parasite infect sheep, goats, cattle, and other ruminants. Hemonchus plasi and Hemonchus similis is important for cattle. The location of this parasite is in abomasum. The distribution of this parasite is worldwide, mostly in tropical and subtropical regions. Please note that the parasite under this genus are called barbar pole worms due to their similarity to the barbar pole. They are also known as stomach worm due to their location in the abomasum. Disease caused by this parasite is called hemonchosis. Morphological features of Hemonchus species. Hemonchus species can be identified by their gross and microscopic features. Grossly, the parasite is 1 to 3 cm long. In fresh specimen, the white ovaries of the female spirally coils or twist around the blood filled intestine. Due to its similarity with the barbar, barbar pole, the parasite is known as barbar's pole worm. Microscopic features include a rudimentary buccal capsule. A tiny tooth or lancet is located inside the buccal capsule, which is visible only under the electron microscope. This structure is used for the puncturing of the blood vessel of the host. This structure is found in adders as well as larval stage 5 or L5. The presence of cervical papillae also helps in the identification of the Hemonchus species. As Hemonchus is a bursa nematode, the male parasite bears a large bursa with asymmetrical dorsal lobe. Specules are barbet. Differentiation among the different species can be done based on the length of the specule. Female parasite has bulbar flap. Life cycle of Hemonchus species. Life cycle is direct as there is no involvement of intermediate host. Final hosts are sheep, goats, cattle and other ruminants. The location of this parasite is in abomasum. Infective stage is L3. So the female parasite in the abomasum will lay eggs which will pass with the feces. In the environment, egg has two L1, then mold to L2 and L3 within a week. But in cool condition, this developmental period may take for a month or so. The final host are infected by the ingestion of the L3 contaminated grass. Afterwards, excitement of the L3, that is, breakdown of the outer covering of the L3 occurs in the rumen of the final host. L3 to L5 occurs in the abomasum and adults move freely in the mucosa 
of the abomasum. Pre-pattern period is usually two to three weeks in sheep and goats and four weeks in cattle. In case of unfavorable conditions or hypobiosis, the pre-pattern period will be longer. Pathogenesis of hemonychosis. You know, the adult parasites are located in the abomasum and with the help of the lancet, they puncture the blood vessel resulting in leakage of blood in the abomasum. Blood loss is further contributed by adults as they are hematophagous. Note that an adult parasite sucks 0.05 ml of blood per day. In hyperacute case, there may be the presence of 10 to 30,000 parasites which uptake 0.5 to 1.5 liter of blood per day along with continuous leakage of blood in the gastrointestinal tract. As a result, affected animals die suddenly due to hemorrhagic anemia and gastritis. Blood loss in acute cases is also significant. There may be presence of up to 10,000 parasites, which sucks up to 0.5 liter of blood per day, along with additional leakage of blood in the gastrointestinal tract, resulting in hemorrhagic anemia and gastritis. Due to generalized hyperproteinemia, fluid accumulates in the intermandibular space, known as bottle jaw. In acute case, blood loss is compensated by the increased erythropoiosis, but over time, bone marrow gets exhausted, resulting in increased severity of the anemia, gastritis, and edema. Consequently, some animals may die in this stage as well. Blood loss in chronic condition is less. Affected animals able to compensate the blood loss by increased erythropoiosis. Clinically, affected animals show signs such as anemia and progressive waste loss and become lethargic and emaciated. Clinical signs of hemonchrosis. For a better understanding of this clinical science, you should understand the pathogenesis first, which I have already discussed. There are three clinical forms of, the, of this disease. In the hyperacute case, there is sudden death of the animal due to huge loss of blood and hemorrhagic gastritis. In acute case, anemia, variable degree of edema, particularly fluid accumulation in submandibular space and ascites are more common. Due to hemorrhagic gastritis, the color of the feces become dark. Overall, the animals become lethargic and there is production loss. In chronic cases, progressive, progressive weight loss is observed. Anemia and edema are less commonly found. Diagnosis of hemonchosis. For the diagnosis of this disease, the clinician should know about the risk factor. A higher prevalence of hemonchosis is found more in hot and humid conditions because these conditions are more favorable for the larval development and survival. Further, previously infected sheep act as carriers and become the source of infection for other animals. However, increased prevalence can also be seen in advent of rain after a long dry period. This occurs due to the activation of hyperbiotic larvae in abomasum, or animals may get more infective larvae while grazing on the green grass that grows after the rainfall. Confirmatory diagnosis is made based on the coproscopy. It is noted that X cannot be differentiated from the X of other genera of the Trichostome Galeria superfamily, but we can assume that, uh, or we can denote the egg as Trichostome Galeria type X. High egg per gram or EPG can be found in acute hemonchosis. Necropsy findings depend on the 
clinical syndromes of hemonchosis. In acute hemonchosis, 1 to 10,000 worms may be present on the abomasum. Worms can be seen on the mucosal surface. Numerous red marks or hemorrhagic spots can also be seen on the mucosal surface. Abomasal content becomes reddish brown or dark brown. Pale mucous membrane with hydrothorax, hydropericardium, and ascites are also common. Treatment of hemonchosis. For the treatment of hemonchosis, benzimidazole, group of anthelmintics, and avermectin can be given. Thank you.